Awards. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us here this evening. Awards. This should work better. There we go. That's fantastic. So, and it's also absolutely exceptional this evening to be joined by the European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker. Thank you so very much for making the time to be with us this evening. We really, really are so honoured to have you with us tonight. And please join me in welcoming the Commission President. So we are tonight here at the gorgeous Egmont Palace. It's a pleasure to have you with us, but also I'd like to welcome our viewers on Euronews who are watching us live and also those who are following us on our digital platform. So tonight we recognize outstanding achievement and that across five categories. And those categories are leadership of the year, personality of the year, European entrepreneur of the year, and innovator of the year, and finally, European corporate social initiative of the year. And I'm Isabel Kumar, I'm from Euronews, and I am your host tonight for the European Leadership Awards ceremony. Now, it's been a fantastic team effort. We've got a great jury who have helped us deliberate in choosing our winners. The caliber was extremely high, so please also join me in applauding our fantastic jury. And so without further ado, I'd like to welcome to the stage CEO of Euronews, Michael Peters, who I usually see in Lyon, but now it's great to see you in Brussels. Michael, I know you'd like to say a few words to us tonight because it was important to you to hold a second edition of the European Leadership Awards. Yes, indeed. Indeed, Isabel. So I'm, I'm very happy to have all of you here, Mr. President. Uh, it would be a pleasure to, to have a moment together just after uh, this time. Uh, yes, it was very important for us, uh, and uh, I see that so many people are here. Um, I think that as a news organization, you know, we are always here to break the news and most of the time to speak about, I don't know why, by the way, journalists are always speaking about bad news. You know, this is always the problem. We never speak about good news. Why? Do you know why? Yeah, this is how journalists are made, you know, like uh, something in their blood or whatever. And uh, I think that sometimes it's good just to pause, to take a pause and... Uh, uh, and to, to think about all the positive uh, things that can be made and can be done. And uh, this was a no-brainer for me, you know, to organize this second uh, uh, European Leadership Awards, uh, because I think that we will be inspired tonight by you, Isabel, of course, and by all the people who will win, and especially, probably, the last one. So thank you very much, Michael Peters. So we're looking forward to the rest of this ceremony. And so let's get started. And we begin with the European Entrepreneur of the Year. And I would like to welcome to the stage Mr. Pierre Gattaz, who's a member of the jury, but not only, of course, he's president of Business Europe. And he'll be handing the award to the person who has epitomized Europe's competitive and business spirit. So tell me, Mr. Gattaz, um, what does it take to be a great entrepreneur? Well, thank you very much. And uh, hello to everybody, to Mr. President. I'm very happy. And I think it's a pretty good news. To, uh, to, to give awards to what I call the heroes of nations, which are entrepreneurs. And to become an entrepreneur, you need maybe three basic qualities. You need to be brave, avoir du courage. I think if you are not brave, you cannot overcome all the obstacles, all the problems that you have to, to, to overcome all day, like all, all day long. Then you need to have, um, to, to, you need to have faith, passion. You know, if you don't have passion, la passion, you will not go very far. You need to wake up with your project, you know, sleep with your project, and, and really believe in your project. And the third basic quality is, is a touch of craziness. You need to be a little crazy, because when you are an entrepreneur, I mean, you know, you dream. And, and you dream of your project, and you need to keep on, and this dream uh, bring you to, to the top. 
So crazy heroes of nations. Well, these are the nominees. Frederick Carling is CEO of Hovding, a Swedish company behind the world's first airbag for cyclists. Now, in 2006, Hovding won the Venture Cup, where young entrepreneurs developed the idea into a sustainable business plan. Now, Oliver Louis, the founder of travel booking site Kiwi.com, and that's headquartered in the Czech Republic. And it's a unique flight ticket search engine allowing users to combine flights, connections, and I dare say dreams. And Vincent Zimmer and Marcus Kressler, co-founders of Chiron. Chiron Open Higher Education addresses the obstacles facing many displaced people seeking higher education. Now, Chiron has become the largest education program for refugees. Now I can see you have that all important envelope. Let's find out who the winner is. Um. And the winners are Vincent Zimmer and Marcus Kessler. Now, accepting the award on their behalf is uh, another founder of Chiron, Juan David Mendetta. initiative. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, well, thank you very much. As, uh, as one of the founding members of, of Chiron, just wanted maybe to, to, to thank you for, for, the, for the reward and for all the support that everyone has given us. Uh, the company, since the very beginning, was created with the idea of using technology, and especially scalable technology, as a way to, to solve a social problem. And it's, it's really incredible to see how after, after years of work, now the, the first result of that has actually come, come to a reality and the company not only has proven that, that technology and, and, and traditional entrepreneurship can be used to solve social problems, but as well that uh, innovation that comes from, from the social entrepreneurship can be in the future implemented to solve problems for, for everybody. And that's really where the company is going in the future as a way to, to find solutions for the education of, of tomorrow. It's a very intelligent and also very empathetic uh, initiative to one of the greatest problems in some respects that Europe's facing today. So please do join me in a large round of applause to the Chiron team, but also Mr. Fiaga. Thank you very much. On to the next category now, and that is European Innovator of the Year. And please welcome to the stage Dr. Jay Shankar, uh, who is President and Global Head of Corporate Affairs at Tata and Sons. Now he's going to present the award to one of the most progressive visionaries in Europe today. So tell us, what defines an innovator for you? Uh, well, I would say partly optimization, partly creativity, but you need a drive. So. I'd say you need a obsessive focus as well. So, th you know, one third optimization, one third creativity, one third obsession with a touch of crazy. Oh, always the touch of crazy. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. So let's find out who our nominees are. And they come from very different domains. And they are Ivan Bourgnon. Now, he's the man behind the Sea Cleaners project. And that's the innovative Manta factory ship that will use state-of-the-art tools to remove, sort, and compact floating macro waste before it degrades and pollutes marine biodiversity. Frito Stoffer and Daniel Bestein from the Dutch cyber security startup Storo. Innovative technology is at the heart of what Storo does, building software that is secure and private by design, allowing users to keep information safe as they collaborate with colleagues and external partners. And finally, Richard Weiss, Richard White, Vice President for Procurement and Sustainability at AB InBev Europe. And that's the world's largest brewer. One of the most recognized innovations is the simmer and strip. And that's an ecological technique where beer is brewed while reducing a 
maximum energy consumption. So, Doctor, who is the winner? Uh, Yvonne Bourgnon. The winner is Yvonne Bourgnon. This is an absolutely incredible project. Can you tell us a bit about the impact it's going to have? Uh, good, uh, after, good evening, everybody. Happy to be here with you. Uh, yes, uh, the, it's an association, Sea Cleaner, uh, international as association, the, and the goal is to protect the ocean. But the innovative uh, part of this project is, uh, you understand, is the boat, because we try to find a solution to collect uh, the plastic at the top of the ocean, and really we find the solution one year ago uh, to go and to pick up the ocean massively. Uh, we will be able to pick up uh, with 300 boats about at 30% of the, all the pollution. And uh, this boat is incredible because we use only the sun, the wind, and the plastic to go forward and to pick up the plastic. And we really hit the plastic with the pyrolysis. So we don't need uh, energy from outside, fossil energy, for example. And we don't need to come back to the land. We just use the plastic we pick up to, to make the energy on board. So we use a wind turbine, we use solar panel for sure, we use hydrogen, hydrogen generator, we use the pyrolysis, and we use all this magnificent energy. And we will be the first uh, walking boat on the sea who don't use uh, this uh, gasoline. So it's 3,000 tons, this boat, 70 meters long, 49 meters wide, and 72 meters high. And we will launch this boat in 2023, the first one. And we hope to, to launch about these 300 boats uh, in, uh, inside two, 10 years. Thank you very much. An absolutely incredible project. <laughs> And let's remember the European Union's commitment to fighting plastic waste. And talking of the European Union, let's also not forget that we are joined by European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker. And we're going to soon find out why that is. And that's certainly something to look forward to. But on to our next award now. And that's the European Corporate Social Initiative of the Year. An award that brings together values and business, and I'd like you all to give a very warm round of applause to Anne Metzler, who is a member of the jury, but also the head of the European Political Strategy Centre, which is the in-house think tank at the European Commission. Thank you very much for being with us. So last year... <laughs> Last year, our category was European CEO of the Year. So this year, we've kind of shifted focus. So tell us a little bit, why is it important to consolidate business with social initiatives? Well, I would argue that uh, it's important uh, at any time. But it is, of course, a fact that today there is a lot of concern around uh, growing inequalities, around the threat of climate change, also a high degree of polarization in our society. So I think it's absolutely right that businesses do a little bit more in really engage in these social initiatives. I will say, however, also that having looked at the nominees, it's not a one-way street because I believe that social initiatives are good for the companies themselves. And if you study uh, the nominees tonight, they have really made sort of good economics and smart business out of it. So I think it is very much also good for the company itself. And they're also making an impact in terms of sustainability. And those nominees are Jean-Pierre Clamadieu, who is chairman of Engie. Now, Engie is a French energy supplier, which I imagine all of us know here, that operates worldwide. And faced with the growing urgency of climate change, its ambition is to lead the zero carbon transition. Sari Dubourg is a member of the board of the executive directors of BASF. Now, BASF has recognized Recognized, has been recognized for its continued commitment to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Martin Willig, CEO of Bolt, and that's an Estonian startup. Now, the name highlights speed and electricity, and Bolt is the name of one of its new electric scooters, a bid to provide cleaner and different forms of transport uh, around the world and European cities, of course.
So, who is the winner? So I'm very pleased to announce that the winner is Saori Duborg, uh, our BISF, for her groundbreaking work on the SDGs. these sustainable development goals to help you, guide you in what BASF does? Well, first of all, let me tell you, Europe is us, it's nobody else. And I think we as business, it's time to bring ourselves in. We have benefited from so many years of peace and prosperity. And I think the reason why we brought ourselves in is it's time to build trust together. And so six years ago, BASF worked on a new PNL where no longer we are just measuring impact via profit, the monetized value, but also how do we create value for society, monetized, and how do we do on the impact of environment? And so today I'm feeling very humbled for this prize because we have a long journey in front of us. It's not about me, quite frankly. I would like to take this on behalf of many companies who have joined our initiative for you know, developing this PNL for bigger inclusive growth. And so there are many CEOs that have now joined us. There are banks, there are investment houses, but also there is you know, academia. And um, I really feel humbled for that. There's a long way to go, but thank you very much to the jury. We will use this as motivation to continue and we hope we can give something back to the EU. Thank you so much. Motivation is very important. Sorry, Dupont, but also Anne Mettler, thank you very much. Now, our penultimate category is European Personality of the Year. Now, our European Personality of the Year Award recognizes people who are pushing the boundaries in Europe and sending out a message of hope. Joining me on stage is Celia Moore. Now, Celia Moore is the former director of corporate citizenship at IBM for Europe, Middle East and Africa, also a member of the jury, and she'll be presenting this prize. So, Celia, tell us tonight what values are important? Because when we look at our nominees, they've got a very clear, important set of values. So what values do you think are important when it comes to this transformation in Europe? Well, um, when I look at um, people who, um, who are successful change makers, then they bring very deep personal values. And three that I would particularly pick out are firstly, a strong belief in mutuality in um, the common good as a, a driver uh, for social progress. Um, secondly, um, a value around partnership, um, welcoming and being open to working with others to drive change. And third, and very, very importantly, integrity and honesty. Because if we're going to make significant change, we need to build trust, we need people to trust us and carry, carry them along. So I think values and personal values um, of all the nominees are um, very strong when they've, uh, um, when they've uh, looked at driving this change. Three very important values. And our nominees uh, this year for the European Personality of the Year are Susanna Kapitova. Now, she is Slovakia's president-elect. And she fought the election as the anti-corruption candidate and a challenger to Central Europe's rising Euroscepticism. Now, when she takes office next month, she'll become the country's first female president. Our next uh, nominee is known to everybody, and that is Greta Thunberg. Now, Greta has inspired students around the world with her climate activism. And she's been telling politicians, like European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker, to act decisively in no uncertain terms when it comes to climate change. And our third nominee is Lilian Turin. And he's one of the world's most prestigious football players, but also a powerful voice against racism. Now, he set up the Lilian Turin Foundation, which tackles racism through education. Celia Moore, tell us who the winner is. I'm delighted to announce that the winner of uh, this award is Zuzana Kaputova. Zuzana Kaputova isn't with us, but she has sent us a video message which will be played right now on one of these screens. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let me express my gratitude to the organizers of this ceremony. From my perspective, uh, the award belongs to all those in my country who strive for positive change. I was able to participate in many of uh, these initiatives as a civil society activist. Then I entered uh, politics and took part in our presidential elections. The outcome sent a powerful uh, message. A message which resonated not only in Slovakia, but uh, judging uh, by the decision of this commission, in the wider international uh, community as well. Uh, I'm proud of my country and uh, our people. We have shown that a constructive attitude and civility carries great power. I believe that this message uh, can be important for wider European context uh, because our countries face the similar challenges. For example, um, the growing populism, uh, fake news and spread of fear and hatred. Our experience in Slovakia shows that honesty, decency and constructive tone may not be a disadvantage at uh, this time. In fact, it may be the response to some of these challenges. Uh, my political journey has just started, but my position on key international issues has been clear for some time. For me, combating climate change is one of the greatest uh, challenges uh, of our generation. We have to find common ground and to work together. I also take these awards as an uh, encouragement to work as a president of Slovakia uh, towards greater cooperation in Europe. I firmly believe in the uh, power of European unity based on values uh, that bind us together. Uh, let us build our cooperation on the foundations of humanism, compassion and empathy towards one another. Uh, this is the only way to confront hatred and fear. Thank you once again for the award. It's uh, an encouragement to work hard to achieve my political vision. It was an honor to address you tonight. Nice evening to everyone and thank you. So strong values there underpinning a new political journey. Celia Moore and Susanna Kapitovas, thank you so much. Now the moment we have all been waiting for when we present the European Leadership Award, an award that has been uh, selected, or the winner has been selected by Euronews and the European Business Summit. And could I request that Michael Peters, CEO of Euronews, and Jean de Gelder, who is managing partner of the European Summit, to come to the stage to present the award for the European leadership. Now, Jean de Gelder, you have the very important job. You are going to reveal who that winner is. Yes, well, we were not going to ask you to come all this way for no good reason. So I'm very honored to announce that the winner is Mr. Juncker himself. <laughs> Before you join us, Michael Peters will say a few words. Very second. Michael, I think you're going to tell us a little bit more. Mr. President, your commitment to Europe has been unfaltering and very sincere. You have fought, and I know you will fight again, for Europe, its people, and the values underpinning the project. Under your leadership, you have guided Europe through new and old crises. You have been a stabilizing force, a voice of experience, calm and firm at moments of high tension, and at times even bringing moments of light relief with your signature good humor. I think one of the remarkable things about your leadership, Mr. President, is how you have shown time and time again the power of your love 
for Europe and Europeans. In a recent interview, you warned against rising animosity and that Europeans have forgotten how to love each other. Mr. Juncker, thank you for fighting, but also loving and reminding us, as you put it so well, that it's high time we revived our collective libido. European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker. Monsieur, Monsieur le Président, cher Jean-Claude, je suis extrêmement ému euh, au nom de moi-même et de tous mes camarades de Renews de te remettre ce prix. Je le dis avec beaucoup d'émotion, c'était un moment que je souhaitais. Euh, je pense que tu as fait beaucoup de choses pour euh, tous les Européens et en partie pour euh, cette petite partie d'Européens qui est à Lyon et qui essaye de faire de cette chaîne Euronews une chaîne d'information européenne tous les jours. Merci infiniment pour ton soutien. Merci. First one, uh, dear Michael, dear uh, Jean, to receive this award was uh, our friend who was awarded for his ideas on young entrepreneurship. He was starting by saying, or he was finishing by saying, that his company is solving the problems of everyone. That was my initial ambition, too. <laughs> and uh, in fact, I should have been awarded when I was starting. But the fact that I'm awarded when I'm finishing at the moment of autopsy is uh, a recognition of the merits of uh, the European Commission. There were two other commissioners, uh, a former one, Michel Barnier, the chief negotiator for Brexit, a poor guy, <laughs> and uh, Cecilia Malmström, your trade lady as Trump is telling me when we are sitting uh, together. They have all the merits which would have allowed them to be awarded uh, tonight. I'm taking this award. I have so many awards in the name of the Commission because I'm, yes, I'm the President, but our performance is a collective uh, one, not only of Commissioners, but also of the teams of those Mr. Orban is describing as being blunt bureaucrats. They are excellent. We have the unique chance in Brussels, in Europe, to have excellent teams. And so I'm taking this award in their name uh, too. Je reçois rarement des prix des patrons. C'est seulement la quatrième fois que je suis distingué par uh, les patrons par le European Business Summit, this time. Lorsqu'on m'a dit que je recevrais euh, ce prix, je me suis demandé qu'est-ce que j'ai fait de mal. <rires> Mais mon ami Pierre Gattas sait pourquoi il a décidé qu'un membre du jury, enfin, je ne sais pas si toi aussi tu as voté pour moi, enfin. <rires> je, je te le souhaiterai parce que je vais te, te voir demain à 16 heures. <rires> Et, et donc, euh, je suis, oui, euh, particulièrement euh, ému, oui, il faut l'avouer, d'avoir ce prix, surtout parce que Euronews fait partie de ceux qui ont organisé cette euh, cérémonie. Would I have known that this ceremony would take place tonight, I would not have proposed to have a European summit in Sibiu the day after tomorrow, because the reason why I cannot have dinner is that I have to prepare uh, this uh, meeting. But I'm particularly honored to receive this award from my friends from Euronews. I'm, I'm the one who is watching you hour after hour and day per day, mainly during night, because in my Brussels hotel, I have only three or four channels.
Christians, include, <laughs> including UNUS. And I have to say that the programs of UNUS are improving. <laughs> they are close to be perfect. Because when you are watching these programs, you are totally informed. Although from time to time, details <laughs> are dealt with in a particular way. I was watching Euronews yesterday night, of course, and there was a uh, reportage on the funeral of the former Grand Duke of Luxembourg at Euronews, a Republican channel. This great man, of course, was not called Grand Duke, but Duke, which is not reflecting the total dimension of the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, because he was a Grand Duke. But apart this, I have to say that I'm very happy to have this news channel, which is an objective one, which is not a propaganda instrument of the European institutions, but which is uh, around the world. In Asia, in Africa, in the Caucasus, everywhere, uh, telling people what the European Union is about. So I'm particularly honored, uh, mon cher Michel, d'avoir reçu uh, uh, le prix également au nom de Euronews. Vive le journalisme libre et vive l'Europe. Mr. President, if you could stay with us for just a photo. Monsieur Jean-Claude Juncker, may I... Would you stay back? Because we would love to keep you here with us. And if you could take centre stage, because we are going to invite all our winners to join us on stage. And please join me again in thanking Jean-Claude Juncker for that wonderful speech, full of humour and also very inspirational and warm. So if all our winners could join us on the stage. And... <laughs> Thank you very much. So, yes, all our award winners are going to join us with their awards, of course, for a photo. And I would like to thank everybody here who has joined us tonight for the second edition of the European Leadership Awards. Again, special thanks to Jean-Claude Juncker. And we'll say see you next year. Thank you very much.